<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can perform a hard mod on an original Xbox. Now for this, I'm going to be using the Aladdin XT Plus 2, and there's going to be several pieces of hardware and software we're going to need, which I will have up on screen right here. Uh, for several of these as well, I'm also going to have links down below in the description where you can purchase them if need be, whether it be soldering equipment or the mod chip or anything else related to this tutorial. Now to address a couple things, some people might be asking, why don't you just TSOP flash your system? It's the same as a mod chip. Because this is a 1.6 Xbox, we cannot do a TSOP flash on here. That only works on versions 1.0 through 1.5. If you have a 1.6 and you want to hard mod it, you have to get a chip. Now people might also ask, why don't I just soft mod the console? Well, you can soft mod the console. The problem is with that, again, you cannot use a custom BIOS and the main benefits of a custom BIOS for me at least are I can drop in any type of hard drive and install it and just run a Hexen disk or any other type of recovery disk and install and set up my Xbox all over again. While as with a soft modded system, you have to go through an extra process and get another hard drive, put your keys on there, lock it. You don't have to lock a hard drive with a hard modded console either, which is pretty nice. So that's why I'm going to be doing a hard mod on here as opposed to a soft mod. Now, one last thing before we get into the tutorial, I also wanted to give a huge shout out and thank you to a user named Dark Gabs. He has talked with me quite a bit, and he was the one who actually told me about this mod chip, showed himself installing the chip in his system, told me quite a bit about it, and kind of the lowdown of it here for installing it in a 1.6 Xbox. So he definitely made the process a lot easier having that background knowledge before I did the install on here. So with all of that prelude out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the actual installation itself. Itself. Now the first thing I recommend you do is take your mod chip, put it down on something secure, and tin these two points. There's going to be BT and there's going to be another point on the chip itself. What I recommend doing is take some solder, tin both of them, and then take a small wire and solder it to each point. What this is going to do is this is going to enable the chip to be in always on mode. Now this step is optional, but it is recommended. What this means is every time you turn on your Xbox, no matter what, it is going to boot up with that custom BIOS. We used to turn off chips years ago when Xbox Live was a thing, but now that Xbox Live doesn't exist on the original Xbox, there's no reason to be live safe, so to speak. Now go ahead and check your wiring and check your soldering, make sure that's not moving around all too much and it doesn't get loose, and if everything's good on that, great. That is really all the work we had to do on the chip itself, so the rest of this is now going to be on the Xbox console. Dirty motherboard, I know, I know, I promise I cleaned it up afterwards. But what you want to do is you want to find where your LPC debug area is. You want to take your pin header, make sure the parts that is less exposed is going into the motherboard itself, and just drop it in like so. You want to install at the bottom of that LPC debug area, not at the top. So all you do is drop this in, and then what I recommend doing is taking something such as electrical tape and tape it onto the top of the motherboard and make sure it's nice and secure. What we're going to do is we're going to afterwards flip the motherboard over and we're going to solder this pin header into the console itself so it stays there permanently. This is required for the mod chip. Now what I recommend doing is take the Xbox, flip it over, make sure everything is secured, and then take some flux. I'm using Kingbow Flux and a Q-tip to just plop all of it on right here. So load up your flux and make sure it is covering up everything. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take our soldering iron with some solder and we're going to lightly tin each point so that it is nice and secure and connected to the motherboard itself. Once you get the last point down, double check all of your soldering, make sure everything looks good and everything is connected well, and that is it at this point. Now what we're going to do is we need to rebuild the LPC. You see, this portion was actually disabled on the Xbox 1.6, so that is why we're going to need to run several wires between different points on this board. 
Now what we're going to do is we are going to need to solder five wires uh, from the LPC points to different points on the motherboard itself. Uh, this does seem a little bit daunting, but if you know what you're doing and you have some patience, it's pretty easy to do. What I'm going to do is I'm first going to flux and tin every single one of these points that are on the board after I find them. And what you're going to see right here in the corner is there is a diagram that has been provided. And this diagram is going to show you the five points you need to solder to on the board itself. Now I know you're thinking I might have skipped ahead a little bit because there is a wire already on the board. Ignore that wire for now. I actually did not realize until near the end of capturing this footage that that wire was not soldered to the correct point, which we will fix up later. So the current wire that is on the board, ignore that for now until I make mention of it later on. But what we're going to do is we're going to start wiring up everything to the LPC itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to be attacking the next point right here, and we're going to be soldering this over to the designated area that is shown on the diagram. You could do these in any type of order, but if you feel more comfortable following along with this, go ahead and just watch this video and you can kind of follow along while I'm going through all these points. I would also recommend as you're soldering all these to tug at the LPC wires a little bit, not a whole ton, not violently, but just enough so that you can make sure you have a nice and secure connection. When you're soldering to each point on the motherboard as well, I'd also recommend kind of stretching the wire out to that point to see how long of a wire you would need, and then cut it and trim it back accordingly before soldering it on. That way we will have some nice, clean, and short wires. Now with that done, great, let's go ahead and move on to the next point. This one we're kind of going to have to cross over a little bit similar to uh, what we did with the previous wire where I had to move it, you know, from one side of the board to the other, but just do the exact same logic on this, kind of get a little bit of a long wire uh, measured out to the point you need to solder it to, and then cut it, trim it back accordingly, and solder it to the point on the motherboard. Now, right here, this recommendation I have for you all, if the wire is a little bit too frayed and it's preventing you from soldering, just go ahead, take it, pick it up between your fingers and just tighten it back a little bit like I did right there. That way you'll have, you know, everything in kind of one solid connection and it should be a lot easier to solder if you're having any issues with splitting or fraying.
Now this next point is going to be the one that is closest to the LPC debug area. This is what I would recommend you do. Take your wire and strip back a lot more than normal. And then what you want to do is solder the first part over to the LPC debug header itself. And then you want to kind of move it down onto the board, just move the wire down so it is touching the board itself, and then connect it and solder it to the point that is on the board. So that way you'll just have one long wire going from the LPC debug area to the point on the board itself. After that, what you can do is go ahead, take something to cut it, like some small scissors or whatever it might be, and then just cut as much as you can. So that way, we will just have a small portion of the wire right there that is connecting the two points. As you can see, I have a little bit of insulation right there that I just decided to keep because I didn't have anything fine enough to cut that up on hand. Uh, but if you want to, you can completely slice that out of there or just leave a bit of insulation. It's up to you. Now, finally, for this last point, this is the one that I had to correct. What what you want to do is you just want to go onto this point of the LPC debug area and then wire it up to the proper point on the board. Once this wire is completed, that is it. You have successfully rebuilt the LPC, assuming your soldering is good and all of the points are correct. Once you have that all ready, congratulations. What I'd recommend you do is go ahead, take some isopropyl alcohol, take a Q-tip, and clean up any of the mess that you've made off of these points. You wanna make sure everything is as clean as possible before moving on. What you might have to do also is you might have to clean up the top of the board as well too if any flux or anything else got through, but just make sure that everything along these solder points is clean and then we can continue on to the next steps. Now once you go to the top of the board, remove the tape that was securing down the pin header, make sure that is clean, and then you want to move up a little bit and you want to find this chip right here, which should be easy to find because it has the Xbox logo on it. And what we're going to be doing is we are going to be cutting the L tray. The reason why we need to do that is because if we keep this intact, the Xbox could still work, but the issue is you might actually damage your Xbox after prolonged use. So to make everything safe and sound, we're going to cut this trace. What I'd recommend doing is make sure the area is clean and then take a X-Acto knife and just slowly keep going across the trace until you see it's cut. If you see any type of debris or anything from the board obstructing your view, just keep it clean and just go as slow as possible if you need to. We're not gonna do anything crazy, but we just need to make sure this trace is successfully cut. Once you feel like you're done, I'd recommend giving this area a good cleaning, verify your work, make sure the trace is cut, and once you can verify that, you should be ready to go at this point. So you can turn off your soldering iron, you can put away your X-Acto knife, we don't need those anymore. Now if you've gotten this far, this is going to be the hardest part of the tutorial. What you need to do is you need to take your mod chip, make sure it is going to be facing this direction the way I'm doing it, and then you just plop it onto the pin header, and that's it. I know, I kind of joked about it being hard. It's not really that hard, but congratulations, your mod chip is now successfully installed. Now we need to verify that it works and all of our soldering is correct. Now here's the moment of truth. Hook up your DVD drive, hard drive, audio, video, and power. The mod chip should get power showing that it is illuminating red, and then turn on the console and make sure it doesn't flash any crazy colors. When you look at your TV screen, look in the top left corner. If you see the Evox logo right there, congratulations you have successfully installed this chip in your system. Now what you want to do to verify that your chip is working is to pop in a burned disk of some kind if you do not have a soft modded console. I'm using Hexen because I want to install a new hard drive in my system. As you can see, I have the stock dashboard, but it does boot up this game. 
Be warned though, if you're using any of these type of recovery or installer discs, your Xbox is probably going to change colors. That is to be expected. Now at this point, I'm not going to explicitly show it because there are plenty of awesome guides out there for this, but if you want to upgrade your hard drive, which is what I wanted to do, all you need to do is take out your old hard drive casing, remove the four screws that keep the old hard drive in, remove that old hard drive, and pop in a new one in its place. Also, if you're going to replace this with another IDE drive, make absolutely sure that the jumper pin is set to master. After that, just work backwards by putting the four screws in here, put the casing in the Xbox itself, hook everything up, and figure out what to do with that old 8 or 10 gigabyte hard drive. Hey, Lily, t take, take the hard drive. Take the hard drive. Take the hard drive. Anyways, for real though, congratulations, you do have a hard modded original Xbox system. What you can do now is go ahead, burn off a copy of Hexen or any type of other recovery disc, put it in the Xbox on boot with the new hard drive if you are replacing the hard drive, and then go ahead and go with the rest of the install so you can install your dashboards, applications, whatever it might be, and you will successfully have a fully working system with an upgrade on there if you choose to do that. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would very much be appreciated, and if you absolutely hated it, a dislike is fine as well too.